welcome to the Rhodes Weekly Webinar. Today's topic is going to be working with the master branch of Rhodes, which is the currently in developed branch. Uh, and we will also be covering barcodes and uh, signature capture, which are only added in the master branch because they are still features under development. So what you see on the screen now is our GitHub page, github.com slash rowmobile slash roads. And you see there's a link here called Git Read Only Access. So if you want to make a copy of the Rhodes source tree, you access this URL via your Git client. So on Mac, it comes with a Git client. And to verify that it's working, all you need to do is type git. And if you see this help message, that means you have git installed and it's working. If you are running on Windows, you need to install a git client. We use msysgit, which is available on uh, code.google.com. And you install the package, and then you will get a double-clickable git shell which then you'll be able to execute git commands. So the roads what the roads git tree is probably about 2 or 300 megabytes, so it takes a little bit to download, so I won't show that right now. Um, but the command to do that is git clone and then you go to get this URL from the GitHub page. So we'll copy that, and that's how you clone the Rhodes repository. And what you will get is a folder called Rhodes that has the Git repository there. So I've already done that, so if we cd Rhodes, you'll have several files here. What you need to do is add the bin folder on your path. In Windows, you go to your control panel, uh, system settings, and then there's an advanced settings button, and you can change your path. On Mac, I do it by changing my .bash profile. So if we open the bash profile here, you can see I have a line here that has path is user Brian work roads bin path. Once you've done that, then you can run the road stash setup command uh, and basically follow the tutorial and documentation on how to set up roads because once the bin path is on your path, then it behaves just as the gem would behave. Now on Mac I can verify that I have the correct path by saying which row gen and it gives me the path users Brian work roads bin row gen. So that indicates to me that all my path is set up properly and I'm now working with the master branch of roads. So before we get started building an app, uh, I want to point out that if you're using the master branch of Rhodes, this is under active development. So it's not considered stable and new features there may be buggy. Uh, including the features we're demonstrating today are still not fully complete, but are very interesting features that we've just added. So the first thing I'm going to do is generate an application. We'll call this one bars. And in this application I'm going to generate two controllers for what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to call one scanner since we're going to be doing a barcode scanner and give it an arbitrary attributes since we will be changing our ERB files. And I'm going to generate uh, another model called signature. 
So as we've done before in previous webinars, this is just starting our application and giving us a base set of files to work with. We'll go ahead and open this in our editor. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to edit our build YAML. The build YAML is used for all configuration for our applications, so we need to add barcode extension since we're going to be using the barcode feature. And to use the barcode feature, we need to take images, so we're going to turn on the capabilities camera. Go ahead and save that. Another thing you notice here is the very top of our build YAML we have an SDK line. This should be pointing to where you have checked out your roads repository. If it is pointing to your gem path that means that you haven't set up your path right and when you type it when you type rogen it is actually calling the rogen from the old gem. So you should verify that the SDK points to your working copy rather than one of the gems that has been installed. Once we verify that, we're going to go ahead and implement our barcode scanner. The first thing we need to do is add some links to our controllers. We added one scanner. And we also added one called Signature. We'll start by implementing barcode capture. There are several ERB files here we aren't going to be using, so we'll remove them. We will just leave the index.erb. In our controller, we're going to remove several of the methods. We've removed the ERB files for these methods and so we don't need them. We'll go ahead and leave new because we'll use that when somebody clicks to take a picture and scan the barcode. Since we won't be using ROM, we don't need to use any of the code here, we'll just leave our index blank. Alternatively, you could actually remove index completely and it will just render your index page. In new, we're going to use the camera to take the picture. So when the new method is called, a picture will be taken and open up the picture finder so we can scan our barcode. It's going to have a callback called a cam camera callback and we'll have it redirect to the index page after it's completed. We're going to create a function here to display a pop-up. So when we scan our barcode it will run the command and show a pop-up message. All we're going to do is use the alert capability and show a simple pop-up message.
And finally, we're going to implement our camera callback where all of the barcode work is going to be done. You'll find that it is very simple. We'll define our camera callback. We'll have our web view go to our index page. And finally, we're going to call our barcode recognizer. So the way to use this is you call barcode, barcode recognize. And what we need to do is pass this a path to the image. So if you have images already on your device, you can use that. And if you take a look at our system API samples, there's a couple of barcodes included that demonstrate that. We're going to go ahead and pass it the image URI directly from the image that has just been captured. So we're going to get the path using our row application helper here. Get blob path. and then pass the image URI. So this line here is how you use the barcode functionality. There's nothing more to it. You simply pass the location of an image and it will return you the barcode string if it has detected one. Finally, we're going to call alert, sorry, we're going to call show barcode info and pass it our barcode. So this is all it took to implement barcode. We have an index page, a new page that takes the picture, show barcode info that will show a pop-up, and the camera callback, which will take the image and pass it to barcode recognize, which will then return the barcode string. The last thing we have to do before we test this is to add our index page. Our index page is going to be very simple. We're going to say if the system property as camera, then we're going to have a URL that goes to our new action. And then give it a give it a, a name here for the link called scan barcode. save that. So the emulators actually don't have a camera so the only way to test this and to demonstrate if you want to use the camera to take a picture is to run it on the device. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So if we run ADB devices we can see I have a device connected via USB cable. If we look at our rake tasks, we have a rake task to run on the Android device, which is what I have connected. So we're going to call rake run Android device. So this is building the barcode code and attaching that, compiling the native Android code, and once this is all completed it will be deployed to our device.
So it's built everything. You can see when it gets to the point here, it is deploying it to the device. And so on my device, we have our barcode scanner. So I'm going to go ahead and start my camera so you can see this here. So you can see our application here. We have barcode scanner and signature capture. I'll go ahead and select barcode scanner. It shows us our scan barcode page. When we select scan barcode, you can see the image view has opened up and is ready to take a picture. So I have a box here with a UPC on it. I'm going to hold this up and take a picture of the barcode. We're going to go back to the scan barcode page. So I have my camera. So I'm going to go ahead and scan the barcode again. So what happened that time is I took a really bur blurry picture of the barcode and so my alert message popped up but the barcode was blank. It's a little hard to see here with camera but it says alert barcode's blank. So we'll select OK and say scan barcode again. And I'll try to hold this a little better and take another picture. a little better focus this time. So what we see this time when we select the barcode, you can see it printed out the number which is three one one nine one seven one something something and if you take a look at the barcode that I scanned it's 3119171036 so we were able to demonstrate how to do barcode so that's how the barcode scanner works uh, currently but the feature was literally just added uh, at the end of last week, so it is still in uh, very early stages and